All right, here we have a special little video at the midterm for how do we make our files print ready. We're going to need Photoshop for this. So I'm going to go ahead and open Photoshop, getting it ready. But mostly we need to have organized files. And so far in this semester, we've worked through the first six assignments and the first two exercises. Right? So we've done quite a bit. And what I'm asking you to do is to pick three pieces that you want to represent your efforts for the first half. So pick the three that you think you were able to give your, your best attention to, that you think represent your taste, your best expression, and obviously that you thought you were able to finish to the best extent possible, even if they're exercises. So as I go through, I might want to print my cartoon jumble. I might consider that to be one I'd like to see physically represented. And remember that that was a raster project. And even that we came up with multiple versions of. So if I open up my green file here, my PSD, I should have all of the versions within that one file. So that's why I say we want to open up Photoshop to make things print ready. So I'll open that up as an option. Exercise two, same thing. It was a shape project, really kind of a beginning vector project. But if you open it up in Photoshop, it will give you all that information, all those layers at the highest resolution possible. Assignment one was our fantasy landscape. I want you to open up the PSD of it. I'll show you how easy this is. I'm going to do it to almost every assignment. Um, assignment two, if you go to the PSD, you should have all the options to output it as the highest res print ready file. So PSD files are a working file type. They take up a lot of memory, but they give us the most options. Assignment three was our creature scape, and that should have a PSD as well. Assignment four was our cloud creature design. That should have a PSD as well. If you're missing your PSD document or file, of any of these, we can print from your JPEG. But the problem with a JPEG format is that it's flattened, so we can't make any changes, right? And it's also already been compressed slightly, because JPEG is an online format which has to really compress space. And as long as you print from it without reopening and, and changing and saving and saving as a JPEG over and over again, it shouldn't lose too much of its original quality, but it's best to, to work from a non-compressible format. Okay, assignment five was our animation. Now our animation, we still want to open a PSD, but we don't want to open up our animated file. We want to open up our final storyboard because we are printing here, not showing on a screen. So if you followed all the steps that we did, you'll have a PSD, which is the final storyboard. And that, that's what would be your print file for your animated project. And assignment six, lastly, we have the vectors that we did. But before we made PNGs of them to put online, we had to bring them into a Photoshop file. And that Photoshop file should have the color and the black and white embedded in it. I have a black PSD here, a color PSD here, but that color PSD, because the color I did second, will have actually more options within the layers than the black and white one. All right, so the problem is I'm opening up a lot of huge files in Photoshop, and I'm going to show you what we start to do with them. So I'm going to start working backwards. I really want to encourage you guys to consider printing your logos because it's really nice to have in this midterm portfolio. I used to require it. I'm not going to require it this time, but I'm going to really encourage it. It's really nice in your midterm portfolios to see a vector-based image with a raster-based image next to it to help see the physical differences in them and how they print. So the choice I would make for this is do I want to print my color version or do I want to print my black and white version? So there's my color version with all its glorious effects. Here is my black and white version with no effects. Right? Now when they print, they're going to 
just print on a white background, right? Because empty space would be black, would be white. So do I want black and white or color? I'll let you guys decide. I'm going to make one print ready. Color. All right, so I can do this color, or I can do the the color from Illustrator. Yeah, I think the colors from Illustrator are, are a little more exciting, maybe. So, yep, we're going to do all this stuff. All right. So, how do I make it print ready? Well, what I'm not going to do is overwrite my PSD, right? I have to save it as a new file. But the first thing I do, and all the steps you're going to find in the class Dropbox, I put them in a document to remind you. So if you go to the class Dropbox, which you can get to through links in our course, and all the information's there. You're going to see when you go to your the home of it, or to the files of it rather, you just want to go right to digital art class files. I've cleaned it up a little bit, and you want to go to flatten TIFF files to print. Right? This is how we print, because we need to bring all our print files onto our printing computers. Each of you has a folder in here ready to go. That's where you're going to bring in your print ready files. But to make them print ready, I have a document here. How to make an image print ready. So we open up our finished PSD version of our chosen assignment. The first thing we're going to do is go to layers and flatten image. So if it looks the way we want it to look, doesn't matter if we have the background turned on or off, right? We're going to go to layer, flatten the image, discard hidden layers. So if I know I'm going to print this one, Notice it makes the blank background, fills it in with white. Next, I'm going to resize the image by going to image, image size to change the physical dimensions of your image to fit comfortably within the mat opening. And the mat opening for the midterm is either 8 by 10 inches or 11 by 14 inches if you're using the larger paper. The resolution should fit between 300 and 350. So, if I know I'm going to print this at 8 by 10 inches, then I go to image, image size, and it's already at 8 by 10. That's how I set it up. What is the resolution? 350. So this one's ready to go. So I say OK. What does that mean? It means that this white rectangle is 8 inches by 10 inches. Now the mat itself, the mat opening, even though it says it's 8 by 10, is really 7.5. by nine and a half. So you lose a quarter inch on each side. And I'm just showing you that with guides. And it's still gonna look good there. Right? And it's if you use a black mat, it will look almost exactly like this. The black surrounding my logo. Alright, so this one's ready to go. So what do I do now? Now I save the flattened and resized PSD file not as a PSD. I don't want to overwrite this file because that would mean I couldn't make changes anymore. I flattened it. But I save it as a TIFF format file. And when it asks about compression, make sure that I use LZW. So I'm going to talk you through that. So now I simply say file save as. I don't even need to change the name, but I do recommend you do. And the way I recommend you change the name is put a capital PR in front of it. And that stands for print ready. So I know this is the one I've looked at. I've made it print ready. And then I'm going to save it to the desktop. That's what we always do. And instead of the Photoshop format, I'm going to scroll down to where it says TIFF, TIFF format. When I hit save, it's going to ask me if I want to compress it. Image compression options. And the answer is yes for TIFF. I want to save it, or I want to compress it with LZW compression. LZW is a lossless compression format. 
means it loses no quality and still keeps the memory down. TIFF is what we use as an archive format. So we're done with it. We're ready to print it. We're ready to keep it. It's ready to go. All right, so I've got my first print ready file there as a TIFF. Next project. Now here's the tricky part. I saved it as a TIFF. You see how it says TIFF right there? That's what's open now. The PSD is no longer open. So when I close it, it will automatically close, which keeps me from accidentally saving my PSD after it's been flattened. But if for some reason you still have your PSD open, if it asks you if you want to save changes, you don't want to save changes because you're saving it as a TIFF file. Okay, next, same thing with this one. I say layer, flatten image. If everything looks good here, then I say image, image size. This one's a little different, right? Because this is 30 by 40 inches by 150. I want this to be either 11 by 14 or 8 by 10 by 300, between 300 and 350. So how do I do that? If I uncheck resample, because I don't want the computer to make up resolution. If I uncheck resample, it will keep to its original pixel dimensions. But I can say, instead of 30 inches, I want this to be 8 inches. right? And so it's 8 by 10.667 at 562. That's a lot. Now, that height is larger than 10 inches, which means the top and bottom would be cut off. But I've designed this so that doesn't matter. My image is mostly in the middle. What if I want to do it by 11 by 14 inches? Well, if I do 11 by 14 at the same pixel resolution, that's now 400. So you should have plenty of resolution for your storyboard, for your animation, to print at either size. But let's say I wanted to do it by 11 by 14. Now this is what I would do. I would then say, OK, right? Then I would go to image canvas size, because that will actually cut the paper. And the reason I'm doing this instead of cropping is this way I can put in the measurement. So my canvas size, which we've always used before to make the paper larger, I'm going to use it to make the paper smaller. I want it to be 11 inches wide, but I only want it to be 14 inches tall. And I want it to cut it going into the middle. Not cut it from the top or the bottom, but from both. So I leave that anchored in the middle. I say OK. It will give me a warning saying you're going to lose some of your image. And I say yes, I know. And it will trim it. So now its image size is 11 by 14, or as close as it can get to 14 with this pixel dimension, at 400. Now the problem is, I don't want 400. Not for my print ready file, because anything above 350 is just going to slow things down. And it's going to take up more space than I need. 350 is already above the standard professional limit for print media, which is 300. So I'm going to say resample, and then I'm going to change the resolution to 350. And for good measure, I could put 14 in there. Then I say OK, and it actually did change it. It made it smaller. But this is the exact resolution I want to print at. Right? So now, now that the, the physical dimension and the resolution is right, I'm going to say file save as to the desktop with PR in front of it, capital PR for print ready. Save it as a TIFF file with LZW always turned on. All right, very good. So the difference is that file is a Photoshop file was something like 1.83 gigs. But as a TIFF file, it's only something like 50 megabytes. Actually, with L as a TIFF file without LZW, it was over 50 megabytes. With LZW, it's half of that. And it doesn't lose any quality. All right, now this one. This is just a pretty straightforward picture. The problem with this one is it's a rectangle. It's not floating in white space that we've already designed. And it's not going to fit nicely within an 8x10 or an 11 by 14 But the same steps apply. First, I'm going to flatten it. 
and I'll show them the next demo.